Well, what's up everyone, my name is Tom and welcome to Techstream. Today, thanks to the guys over at Sahara Gaming, we're taking a look at their new R20 RGB Gaming Mechanical Keyboard. So, the R20 Mechanical Gaming Keyboard, it is a 10 keyless RGB software controlled keyboard. The software control part is the important bit. First of all, let's have a quick look at the packaging. It's it's a bit plain. Um, picture of the item on the front. It's used the Noctua brand, uh, brown. It's got some information around the side, but as I found out, you can pretty much ignore what's on here. There is some helpful bits on the back regarding the lighting effects and the shortcuts, but we will go into how you can ignore that as well. If we crack open the box, all you get in the box is you get your keyboard, you get an instruction manual which is in some poorly translated English, um, and weirdly you get two keycap pullers. Uh, one of these ones, which I quite like, you just push them down, he says, you just push them down, it's quite hard to do when you're upside down, and give it a pull. Or you've got the grippy ones which you just put on and again, pull. But that is about it for in the box. It does come with a, like I say, it does come with an instruction manual, but you really don't need it. It does help to put the keys back on the right way around. Um, because everything that's in there is pretty much on the back of the box anyway. But we'll get to all of that first. It does give you all the lighting effects, but you're probably not going to use that. It does give you all the shortcuts, but the shortcuts have got pictures on, so you can follow that yourself. So let's have a look at the actual keyboard. So the keyboard itself, as I mentioned, it is a 10 keyless job, so you're missing that part with your number pad. But it is full-size keys. The, the pattern on the keys, the, the font used is I quite like it. It's not too gamery. It's bold, functional, and easy to read. Um, some of the like the words where they're a bit close together are a little bit more difficult to read, but all nice and simple. You've got your icons underneath your function buttons here for your multimedia keys, things like that. It's a brushed effect, but it, it's got a brushed effect base base plate here underneath. It is actually metal, but more for aesthetics. But to be fair. It's a pretty solid keyboard, but then when a keyboard is chunky and thick like that, it's pretty hard to make a flexible one. Okay. If we flip the keyboard over, you do have a few rubber feet on the back, on the bottom. There's actually six, which I quite liked, and you do have flip-up feet. And the reason for the four at the front is because when you're led down flat, it sits on those four. The moment you stand it up, normally you'll quite often find these ones are no longer touching, so you're relying on that. On this slightly angled part though, you've got a couple more rubber feet. And it just means that even in the upright position, it doesn't budge. In fact, my desk wobbles, but it doesn't budge. It sits exactly where it is. Now, this is a mechanical switch keyboard. It's not Cherry's. It's actually using Ot uh, Otemu, or however you pronounce them. They're brown switches, so these are a quiet with tactile bump switch. I really like browns. Uh, so you've got brown, browns, reds, and Blues are the most common. Blue is your clicky clicky with a bump. Yeah, you've then got reds, which are a completely linear switch, and then you've got browns, which is a tactile bump but no click. So it's in the middle of a blue and a red. If you don't know what you to go for, try browns. Basically, um, it's the middle ground between everything. You get the tactile feel, but without the really irritating click, or as some people think it is irritating. So that is the keyboard. It's relatively basic. It's not got masses of features as a keyboard. Um, it is RGB, and I will show you that now. Oh, it does have a six foot braided cable. Always nice to see a nice braided cable. And you do actually have a couple of different routing options. You can either have it coming straight out the back, or you can push it into the grooves and have it coming out to the side. But the most important bit about this keyboard now this is a budget, relatively budget, RGB mechanical gaming keyboard. So I've got the keyboard plugged in to my Surface here. I've got the software installed and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that software up so you can see it and you can see what I'm doing with this software. This software is the piece de resistance of this product. It's simple as we'll go through 
but great. So when you open it up, basically on the left hand side you've got three menus. You've got a customize, a macros, and a lighting. Now the customize button allows you to choose up to eight different profiles, while the key assignment allows you to change the functions of each individual key. So you can choose to change your Q key to something completely different, a keyboard function, a mouse function, anything like that. You can also assign it to macros. So you may want to decide, I never use the F9 key. I'm going to assign a macro to F9. This doesn't have dedicated macro keys like some products from Razer do and Corsair they do. They've always been into their macro buttons. Um, but there is the option always to choose buttons that you basically don't use. You then have the macros panel where you can create and record all of the different macros that you want to do. And then you've got the one that everybody's looking for, the lighting panel. It, this is where you can have different profiles and choose all of your different RGB color schemes. So well, at the moment I've just got a standard static color sitting here. Okay, You can cycle through them, choose what you want, whatever. You can then go, you've got the breathing and you've got all of the ones that you're pretty used to seeing. Okay, so we've got a uh, reactive one, reacts to pressing buttons. Again, you can choose colors, you can change durations and brightness. Uh, you can have your Aurora. I say it's got pretty much all the ones that you're used to seeing. But what I also found was if you went to this custom one, you can actually have per key, and there's even templates here for particular games, which I thought was really impressive. So you can choose a key. Uh, choose a colour and there we go. It's actually per key addressable on top of being software controlled. It is a simple bit of software but it does everything that is asked of it. All in all I'm really really impressed with this R20 keyboard. So it is a £55 keyboard but there's nothing else that I could find on the market even including full-size keyboards that would give you per key addressable software control, proper mechanical switches, all at 55 quid, under 60 pound. I couldn't find anything, so Sahara really have come out with a proper game changer here. Um, I've reviewed a few Sahara products in the past and they've been good, yeah, no real complaints with them, but they weren't game changers. This product, this is bringing something new to the market. This is genuinely bringing in something that you'd normally expect to be paying 100 pound plus for when it comes to features in it like half. Um, full mechanicals, software control, RGB, macros, profiles, the lot. £55. You really can't go wrong. If you are in the market for a budget keyboard and you're not a big brand fan for some particular brand, Corsair, Razer, whatever, definitely check out the R20. Now I am going to try and find a link and put it down below. At the time of me making this video I couldn't find it actually on sale anywhere here in the UK um, but I will do my best to either get one up or as I find one I will add it into the description down below. So the Sahara R20 is a massive thumbs up for me. I really like it. I'm going to find a use for it in the studio. I'm not quite sure what yet but I will find a use for it. Overall though massive thumbs up. So if you've liked this video give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, a thumbs down, not a problem. As always, if you want to see more of me, click the subscribe button. And if you've got any comments, questions or suggestions, leave them down below. Thank you very much and bye for now.